Hi everyone, my name is Tara Sonneborn. I'm a sophomore electrical engineering student at CNIS University. And today I'm going to be talking to you about dependent sources and a basic circuit analysis. So a dependent source is a voltage or current source that is dependent on another part of the circuit. So we can draw our dependent source as a diamond with an arrow inside of it. This is similar to the current source, which is a circle with an arrow inside of it. So this circuit element is used for kind of simplifying circuits. So what we can say is that we have a resistor. So back then, this resistor right here is going to be called R1. And then our current source, I'll just use current, is three times the current that is flowing through our first resistor right here. So this can be turned into larger circuits. Now what we're going to do is start off with an example. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little basic circuit. So we're going to start off with our voltage source with a positive end where the current flows out from, which will start off with five volts and then we'll go up, start, split off, from right here, we'll have our little dependent source right here. And then we're going to split off right here. And then we'll have a resistor coming off here. And then they'll come back right here, split off again, another resistor. And then come back right here, another resistor. So now what we're going to do is we're going to name everything. So right here, we'll say this will be R1, this is R2, and this is R3. So now what we're going to do is say that this dependent source is going to be a current source. So this current source is equivalent to four times I3. So that means that this current source is going to be four times the current that flows through R3. So now what we can do, we're going to do numbers for our resistors just over here so we have them to reference when we're plugging in numbers. So R1 will be 5.1 kilo ohms. R2 will be 220 ohms. And then R3 will be 1 kilo ohm. So now what we can do is use Kirchhoff's voltage law to solve for this. So we'll have current flowing in this direction, this direction, back down here, and then it'll flow down here, down here. So what Kirchhoff's voltage law says that the voltage in a loop, when added together, the sums of them will equal zero. So what we can do, we'll say this is loop A, which is spinning clockwise, all the loops have to spin clockwise in this situation. So, so now what we do is the sums of the voltages will equal zero. So we're going to start a loop A. So what happens in loop A is we have our voltage source, which will be subtracted by four times V3, because this dependent source is dependent on the voltage and current of this resistor right here. So we have negative four V to three because this is following the direction of the current, so it's been taking away from the voltage. So then now we have um, our V2, which is that resistor right there, which is all equal to zero. So KVL it sums to zero. And then at loop B, which is this top one right here, we have negative V1 because it's flowing in the direction of the uh, current, minus or plus because this is flowing opposite the direction for V3, and then that is all equal to zero. That sums to zero. So then for our final one, C, we're going to start with R3. So R3 flows in the direction of the current, so it's going to be negative plus V2 because this resistor flows in the opposite direction, and then that'll be equal to zero. So now what we're going to want to do is use Ohm's law. So Ohm's law is V, or voltage is equal to 
the current multiplied by the resistance. So we'll substitute all that in. So we'll have five minus four I three R three. That's our new path source again, remember that. And then I two R two, and then that sums to zero. And then for B, we'll have negative I one R one substituting in plus four I three R three. That is equal to zero. And then for our final C loop, our our one K ohm resistor, so R three, so that'll be negative I three R three plus I two R two. So again, this source right here, this is our dependent source right here. This is our dependent source right here. These are all dependent on this, what happens right here. But because of the way we're doing it, they'll all be included together. So now what we want to do is we're going to want to simplify the circuit a little bit so that they're all, all these resistors are included in the loops. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to say that I1 is going to be equal to so we're looking right here at I1. That is only included, the current is only flowing into the loop from loop B. So I1 will be equal to IB for the current in the loop B. And then I2, that's right here, has current from loop A and loop C. But since it's flowing in the opposite direction of IC, we'll have IA minus IC. So I3 is only included in loop C. So what's going to happen is I3 is following the direction of IC. So I3 will be equal to the current in uh, loop C. And then since this current source is dependent on I3, we'll just be plugging in IC for it. So now what we're going to want to do is go back into our loop. So we have A5 minus four times I3, which is IC times R3 minus, and then I2 is IA minus IC. And then that is all sums to zero. And then we'll go back to B. So B will be negative IB times R1 plus Again, going back to our dependent source, plus four times IC times R3, then that would be summing to zero. And then finally, loop C. This is where our dependent source is looking for. So this is the value we're looking for. So we have negative IC R3 plus I2, which is I A minus I C, and that'll all sum to zero. So now what we want to do is combine like terms. Next frame, we'll have this done for you, so you don't have to do it. So, so now once we combine like terms, so we put all of our I A's, I C's, and we plugged in our values for R one, R two, and R three. Now we can produce a system of equations like right here. So then what we can do is we can solve for those system equations or we can do reduced row echelon form if you have like a time prior task that does that. So now you'll solve your system equations. We'll start off with IA. So IA is equal to 5.55. And then IB, these will all be in milliamps anyways because we're using kilo ohms as our power. So then IB will be equal to 0 0.78 milliamps and then IC so the loop around or the current around loop C will be equal to 1 milliamps. So now solving for our, all of these we have 
I1 is equal to IB. So therefore, it's equal to right here, 0 0.78 milliamps. I2 is equal to IA minus IC. So that'll be 5.55 minus 1, and that'll be equal to 4.55 milliamps. And then I3, this is the one where the dependent source is dependent on, so this is the most important one for this equation. So I3 is equal to IC, which is equal to 1. So now to find the current for our dependent source, we will have I dependent is equal to 4I3, which is equal to 4 4 times 1, which is equal to 4 milliamps. And there you have it. This is a little overview of dependent sources. Um, there's going to be more complex circuits you'll eventually look at, but this is just a simple overview. And also help with a review of Kirchhoff's voltage law. If you've never been introduced to KVL, I hope that was a good example. Uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.